Hello, my name is Wendy Bacon. I'm part of the training team at Emble EBI and I'm going to be going through some of these tutorials with you. So uh, we're going to start with the understanding barcodes tutorial. So we're in the tutorial. A lot of it's conceptual. Basically the way you can use this video is if you can just get through the tutorial on your own, awesome. If you get stuck, like one of the tools isn't working and you want to sort of see me click through it, that's pretty much how you can use this. So this was an explanation of the different, uh, how the barcodes work. Um, and how they are. It's, it's quite similar to 10x, which is what I tend to be more familiar with. You can certainly go and see this PowerPoint if you want some more information about plates, batches, and barcodes. So this is where we're distinguishing between the cell barcode versus the unique molecular identifier, bar and identifier barcode, so that you can distinguish between either between cells or between transcripts. Uh, so, right. Why is it important to know which cell a read came from? Well, you're doing single cell analysis. Uh, why do we need a barcode, need to barcode a read transcript too? Uh, so I think this might have even a nice little explanation as well. So it, basically in case you want to distinguish between this at a high level, this one cell had a high level of, I don't know, gap DH and this other cell had a low level, you want to be able to distinguish between PCR duplicates or actual cell differences. Cool. And here's an explanation of how the UMIs work. Again, all really important information to read through. Are UMIs not specific to certain genes? Can the same UMI map to different genes? Uh, no, they're not. They're random. Yeah, they can tag anything you like. And then can the same UMI map to different RNA molecules? Absolutely. In fact, it's likely that two different RNAs have the same UMI. It's pretty unlikely that it'll happen to two different transcripts of the same gene, though. So, onwards with the galaxy! Okay, so assuming you understand how the barcodes work, you've made it to this point. Let's prepare the data. So, we can copy this. I'm gonna upload. Okay, so you won't have these files. This is because I was um, playing around. Okay, but you'll have something blank. So, you hit the paste button, it'll give you a blank box. Type that in, and you can upload. Hit start close, and they'll get there. The glorious orange circle of doom. And we're done. I am going to give you a little bit of a trick though here. I'm also going to be good and actually label my history, which you should always do. Uh, so there's another little trick because sometimes uploading data is slow. Uh, with a lot of these things, if you go to shared data histories, uh, for instance, I tend to uh, label things with input. So when you bake in training, uh, sometimes we'll have these things for you and you'll find different people do this in different ways. Anyway, you can also click there and just import that history. Label whatever you like. And then and then you can go from there. It's, it, that workaround makes more sense with bigger, <laughs> with uh, bigger data sets or bigger tutorials that I worked on. All right, so we're there. Now what? If you, however, go and like switch between histories, you're going to have to refind your spot in this training link. Okay, so we've done that. Now we need to build a data set pair. Forward? No, that's not forward because you need forward to be the R1. Okay. And then get off of that, perform operations on everything. Okay, now what? So now we need to generate a list of reads. Oh, very exciting. So I'm gonna come here, paste fetch. All right, and then I want it to be tabular. And very hopefully, here is my list of stuff. Will be the name. All right, so come back to your tutorial whilst that's sorting itself out, okay? So we now have our paired FASTQ dial, uh, test data and table of the read names. Okay, so now ooh, we get to extract. Okay. And if I'm not mistaken, this sometimes uh, this search bar doesn't necessarily work, but for this one, I believe it does. So, ooh, this stuffs me all the time, trying to input the data. Make sure to click on the data set collection, otherwise it won't work. All right, we now make sure we have a tabular file. This is my list of stuff. We want to tick this box. We want just positive matches. Okay, ooh, we need to check the data type. 
So I'm going to come over here, check this guy, fast key singer, fast key singer, cool. Okay. Oh, we're going to view all the reads side by side using a scratch book. Scratch book. All right. So now let's look what we can get from these reads. So we can see that each read name is starting with this at symbol. We're getting then the sequence of nucleotide bases, a separator, and then a quality score. The main thing that's interesting for us is specifically within the forward read. So wait, that's read two. So we want uh, read one. Uh, and that is we're looking at, oh, I wonder what those Ds could be, is that is we're looking at the cell barcode and the UMI barcode. So if you look in the CellSeq protocol, you'll see that one through six is the UMI. And then seven through 12 is the cell barcode. And then you're getting the poly A tail. And that's quite common in this. The reverse read is when we actually get our sequence of interest. Cool. So now let's look, let's look at the quality. So we're gonna do a fast QC on our original set. All right, because we want everything, not just the four barcodes. So fast QC, I believe, will also show up. And we want, oh, this gets me every time, the data set pair, and we want the original one because we want to see everything, not just the four. So normally you would do this, well, sort of first before you even do anything, but we were trying to examine to see what the different sequences were. But you want to do this on both forward and reverse to make sure that your sequencing was a NAF. If you're looking at quality. For this, we're looking at what's on the actual bases. You may notice, depending on how well the Galaxy server is working today, that these uh, things may be going quite rapidly. Um, this is the magic of pre-recording. Okay, so we've done our fast queue, and so now we're going to look at the web page and then look at the per base sequence content. Uh, so we want to look at the forward, so I'm going to go to that and then that. Web page. I've just repeated that same mistake 18 times. Okay. Oh, this is pretty good sequencing quality. Um, anything in the green is great, and normally single cell RNA seq data is kind of crap. All right, so we want the per base sequence content. And when we look in the tutorial, we are looking for this smooth, relatively constant, noisy, highly varied, and then the T's, where everything goes to hell. Yes, the T's. Okay, so and yeah, you can see that here. It's the exact same image. Why might this be the case? Why is the UMI barcode distribution smoother than the cell barcode? Well, you only have X number of cells, but you have way more UMIs, don't you? So it makes much more um, mixed variation. Okay, so now we need to unite the barcodes with the sequence because obviously they're in different reads. So if you're looking at these example, which of these reads come from the same cell? Well, hopefully this is already just uh, separated out for you. So you can see that all three of these have the same cell barcode. Cool. Which of these reads are PCR duplicates? Well, it can't be that one because that's the only one from the cell. But within this same cell, you've got two with the same UMI. But that doesn't matter. That's just the super unlikely scenario wherein you got the same UMI on um, the same gene. Because the sequences themselves aren't identical, it doesn't matter. They're most likely, hopefully, coming from two different transcripts of the same gene from the same cell, as opposed to one that got duplicated. Okay, so how do we do that sort of en masse, not just thinking about it on a piece of paper? And now we're getting the UMI tools. So... Every time it changes to uni. Okay, so we're going to do the UMI tools extract. We got our paired in data set collection. We're only going to look at the four reads we've been looking at. It just makes it much faster. Barcode on the first read only. Use known barcodes. No, because they're random. We need this pattern. So if we come down here, we've got our barcode pattern, so we can copy that. And I have a quality filter now. Execute. We have the orange circle of doom. Cool. And now we can look at them. So we'll look at read one. All right. 
and then we'll look at read two. Okay, and what we can see from here is, all right, well, we read one is, look at that, it's just a bunch of T's. Uh, but read two over here, we suddenly have your cell barcode. Remember how the, you have the three same cell barcodes? And then the, the UMIs as well, they've been chucked into the header along with the reverse, the actual read from the transcript. And that's what you can find in these bits. Okay, are the forwards reads useful at all? Well, let's see. You've got the cell barcode, you've got the UMI. What else do you need them for? There's a just a bunch of T's and rubbish. All right, so make sure you read through all of this before moving on to the next tutorial.